Copyright, University of South Australia. This recording may contain third-party copyright material. Apart from any use permitted under the Copyright Act 1968, no part of this recording may be reproduced or rebroadcast by any means or process without the prior written permission of the University of South Australia and the copyright owners. All right, so from what we just had a look at, we identified the bony features of the scapula. So we said things like, we know that the posterior aspect is the spine of the scapula, that's the dead giveaway. We said that there's a fossa below the spine, a fossa above the spine. The most lateral part of the spine is this acromion process. And here, there we have the clavicle coming anteriorly from that at the acromioclavicular joint. Look at the lateral aspect, it gives us our glenoid fossa. So the shallow fossa when compared to the acetabulum. The glenoid fossa would be that articulation for the head of the humerus. We can see them coming together here. That crow's beak coming out the front, the coracoid process, our three borders, superior, medial, and lateral, with the superior angle above and inferior angle below. And finally, the fossa on the front, which we saw before sitting between the rib cage and the scapula there as our subscapular fossa. So let's do some labeling on this one. So if we So here we can see the whole scapula and its component parts, but what we need to do is identify the individual structures. So the bone coming across the top here is the clavicle. This end of the clavicle would be coming off and going towards the sternum and that sternoclavicular joint. So here we can see on the lateral aspect of the spine, so we follow the spine along like this, and if we outline this area here, all of this area we call the acromion process. So the acromion process of the scapula is the most lateral part of the spine. So that means that this part along here will be the spine of the scapula. Here from the front, again, we can see the acromion process. And that must make this joint through here, the acromio clavicular joint. Which we said in the previous video was synovial and commonly damaged in sports like football and rugby. This border along here, we labeled as the superior border. Then we gave the name of the angle here between the superior border and the medial border, the superior angle, which can be seen obviously from both sides, the superior angle. Then once again, you can see the medial border from both the anterior view and the posterior view here. So the medial border or the vertebral border. We had the lower part here as the inferior angle This part coming up on the lateral side, the lateral border. And this is what gives us the borders of the scapula. Here we saw that this is the anterior aspect and this is the posterior aspect. So we have a flat surface anteriorly and a flat surface posteriorly. A bunch of borders and this is what defines a flat bone. So anteriorly, that's the one that came in contact with the ribs. So we called sub scapular fossa. On the back though, remembering that this one here, this fossa is existing above the spine and this fossa is existing below the spine. So we use the word supra, which is short for superior and infra, which is short for inferior. So we call the supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa. So the supraspinous fossa and the 
infraspinous fossa. Continuing to label some other structures, I'm just going to put a little one on this guy in here because it won't really fit and then put a one uh, out here. This guy is the coracoid and we remember that the coracoid process as said in the previous video is to mean crow's beak. Then you can see here we've got the head of the humerus is the part articulating with that fossa in there. So just to show you again, here we have the head of the humerus, so the ball, which is making a part of this joint, and we have the glenoid fossa here, this lateral truncated angle of the scapula, and when they come together like that, it's going to be seen in the image to be shown here. So we have the glenoid fossa, and the head of the humerus, so head of humerus, and then tucked in here like this, we have the glenoid fossa. Other structures that we can see here, these two dotted lines are to represent the two different necks of the humerus, so I'm going to put an A and a B. So A we call the anatomical neck of humerus and B we call the surgical neck of the humerus. And The reason why we call these the anatomical and surgical necks is because if we look at this model again which I showed you earlier, here we can see we have the joint capsule of a glenohumeral joint and right tucked up inside there that little line that you can see is the anatomical neck between the head and the humeral bone itself here you can see the joint capsule ending so where the joint capsule ends it leaves the rest of this bone here exposed so the surgical neck is where the joint capsule ends and that's commonly where it's broken so this is why we give the name of surgical neck if we're having a look on the posterior aspect here at a few other structures that we mentioned in the previous video, we can see this area here is a groove on the posterior aspect and this groove is called the radial groove and when we go into this in a bit more detail later we'll know that the radial groove will house a nerve we call the radial nerve. This bump or tuberous projection on the lateral aspect of the humerus we call the deltoid tuberosity. Finally, a few of the other structures that we have. One here is called the intertubercular groove. We labelled on the bones in the previous video, we said that this bony bump here was the lesser tubercle of the humerus and this larger bump was the greater tubercle of the humerus. Can you see that in between them there is a sulcus or a groove? So what we can do here is colour in this area and we call it the intertubercular groove. And this intertubercular groove is a feature whereby what would run through there is your biceps tendon. We've all heard of the biceps. Alright, that's it for labelling of that video.